Hello and welcome to the Tank Spot Crusaders Colosseum Raid Guide. My name is Eliana and in this video I'll go over the strategy that we use for the heroic 10-man version of Anaparak, the last encounter in the trial of the Grand Crusade Raid instance. If you would like more information or would like to learn more about downloading this movie, click more info on the movie information box on YouTube to head directly to Tank Spot. Also be sure to subscribe by clicking the subscribe button to the right, you will be automatically notified as we release movies that way. In his heroic version, Anab and his adds gain a couple new abilities that I'll go over in a minute. Let's start with the basics though. Like all other heroic crusader encounters, Anab gains a damage and health bonus of approximately 30%, which means you can't burn him down before a burr phase anymore. Since it's not really feasible to take three tanks to this encounter, your off tank will be tanking two Nerubian borrowers at the same time pretty often and will be stacking up exposed weakness quickly, a debuff that increases physical damage taken by 30% for 10 seconds and stacks up to 10 times. As long as borrowers are up, they'll keep stacking it. On top of Spider Frenzy, which doubles attack movement and casting speed for every borrower close to another, this is going to hurt. Lastly, they gain a new ability called Shadow Strike, which teleports the Burrower to a random rate member and deals 40,000 damage. This has a base 8 second cast time, but is often 4 seconds thanks to Spider Frenzy. It is, however, interrupt and stunnable, so it should never go through. Have a designated interrupter if your tank has trouble catching them. Either way, Nerubian Burrowers have absolute kill priority. Of course, you still want to tank them on top of permafrost puddles to avoid them actually burrowing and restoring their health. Speaking of permafrost, this has also received a couple changes. For one, standing in one now reduces movement speed by 80% instead of 30%, so unless you really can't avoid running over one, you should try to skirt them. Also, you only get 6 frost spheres to last you the entire fight. Assuming you'll need 2 submerge phases, this means you'll have to make do with 3 permafrosts per submerge. Submerged faces happen approximately every 90 seconds and last a minute, so you should aim to use a permafrost every 15 seconds, give or take. Alternatively, you can aim to never have more than one submerged face, but that requires high DPS and only designating a couple people to kill the very first set of burrowers and leaving the second set up until phase 2. Should you be more comfortable with that tactic, aim to get Anab's health to less than 60% before he submerges. Choosing that strategy gives you greater freedom to utilize permafrosts. As soon as Anabarak submerges, his spikes will pick a random target to follow and won't stop following it until they either hit a permafrost patch, or their target dies, or their target uses an immunity effect. While they start out slow, they gain an increasing speed buff the longer they go without hitting a permafrost, and it'll be impossible to outrun them after a while. What you want to do is take an upper act to either far side of the room at the start of the fight and have a designated raid member kill three frost spheres. One close sphere and two far spheres. This gives you the best possible kiting path. When an up submerges everyone but the off tank and the healer if there's still burrowers up, start moving towards the opposite side of the room with the two patches of permafrost. Once a knot picks a target, that person keeps moving to that side, attempting to drag out the spikes hitting the frost as much as possible. In the meantime, everyone else turns back around and stays on the site with the one permafrost puddle until the first target finishes kiting. When a nap hits the first frost and picks a new target, everyone should already be behind the permafrost furthest from the one that just disappeared. As mentioned, with this strategy you get three permafrosts to last you the whole minute, so make good use of long kiting paths and abilities such as Divine Shield, Blessing of Protection and Feign Death. However, do note that the spikes will still follow a target with Blessing of Protection active, but the raid member will be temporarily immune to the damage, which gives him or her more time to kite onto a permafrost patch. Also, temporary immunity effects such as Ice Block will only make the spikes pick a new target until the Ice Block effect wears off, and then they will return to the very unfortunate mage, unless they hit a permafrost before it wears off, in which case they just pick a fresh target. While successful kiting has utmost priority, don't forget to kill swarm scarabs either, else they'll team up on healers and stack their dot on them to unhealable amounts. 
With using immunity effects, it is possible to finish submerged phases with permafrosts left over. You may want to try to have one up after two submerged phases so you can kill a pair of adds on the permafrost right before phase 3, since burrows will continuously spawn in the heroic version. Once you reach 30%, Phase 3 starts. Threat from Phase 1 will be retained. An upper rack will release a leeching swarm which drains 20% of every raid member's current health every second and heals not for half the amount. Leeching swarm will always drain a minimum of 250 health. While Nab only casts Penetrating Cold in the first phase on normal mode, he's quite fond of using it in Phase 3 in the heroic version as well. It also had its damage doubled from 3000 to 6000 every 3 seconds. In short, this means your healers are most likely going to panic. That's a bad thing. To make this phase as quick and painless as possible, healers need to aim to keep the rate members low on health. Only tanks and people afflicted by penetrating cold will need constant heals. Everyone else should be kept at less than 50% health to minimize an up's healing. If you're a healer that uses Grid on this fight, I greatly recommend downloading an updated version of Grid status rate debuff so you always know who's afflicted by penetrating cold at once. Your off tank should easily be able to hold two burrs for the remainder of the fight, and if DPS is on target, an up should die right before the second set of ad spawns. If you're running a little late like we are in this video, you may be in some trouble though. It's absolutely not feasible for a tank to hold 4 adds at the same time and people will die very quickly, so this definitely serves as a soft and rage timer. Alternatively, it may be doable to kill the burrs as they spawn and still out DPS and ups leeching swarm, but we chose not to test that method. Thank you for watching this movie. As always, feel free to ask questions or add any suggestions either on YouTube or in the strategy thread on tankspot.com. Also, Tankspot donors can download all of these movies in high definition directly from our servers, so if you'd like to learn more about that, just click the second link in the movie information box.